and welcome to another live demonstration. Again, we have a studio audience, so say hi. Hi. Um, and this will be a one session part. Um, so, there's a story behind what I've chosen to do today. Imagine the scenario. You're asked, you're given nine colours and asked to produce something to go on an e-news in a couple of hours. It happens quite often, to be fair, but you just kind of go and... Whew. So that was the scenario behind painting this. Nine colours, the nine colours I need to mention, are the new colours, the 2019 new colours from St Petersburg White Knight. So they're really lovely pans. You get the colour really quickly and fabulous colours. They're a bit sticky, some of the colours are a bit sticky, but that's how they're designed to be. They're called a moist pour, um, and it means the paint is poured in, it's not baked, it's allowed to dry, which means the colour is almost instant. So they were the colours I was given for the um, new colours and asked to do something in a couple of hours. So first thing is, what do I do? First thing I actually do is I do swatches. I don't have time for colour mixing in a couple of hours. So swatches of colours gives me a basic idea of what the colours are, all the details which are on the wrappings which you t then take off to use and you probably disappear, so it's much easier to have them, all the information you need on there, including the colour number, um, which helps if you want to have that colour again. So this was just a little set I got, and also I have written on them what they are, just so in the future I know what they are, because often, if you notice, when you unwrap a pan, you don't get any information on it. So it's difficult to reorder a colour that you like. Right, so I chose to do an ostrich, which has none of the colours that I was given. So n not making it easy for myself, but I just wanted to see the potential of the colours. First thing I'm going to do is use a masking fluid pen, which I've used in the past. It's really nice, easy to control. You need to shake well and just make sure it's flowing through. What I did discover a little earlier is you, I was cleaning the nib like this. It didn't seem to help, so all I did was actually clean it on some tissue and that managed to grip and take off a lot of the dried on masking fluid. It does come with a spare nib. I haven't needed to use it yet. Um, and it's easy to take out and clean. So masking fluid also goes on very quickly and dries quite quickly because Gary did say how are we able to do masking fluid in a short session and because I know it dries really quickly you can almost put the colour on straight away. So I'm just going to use it to put the feathers on and I do have ostrich facts which I will save so apparently, one interesting thing about the feathers is the way they look shaggy. And there is a reason for that. Normal bird feathers interlock and lock with each other, which is great for flight and keeps the shape. Ostrich feathers aren't like that. They're, they don't lock. So it's really nice just to be able to really create nice loose movement with the masking fluid pen. I think I might have chosen the small nib. And there is another nib, which is a four mil, rather than this 0.7 mil, and that probably would have been better. But like a lot of you out there, you know, sometimes I think smaller is better, but really, I think with a bigger nib and the light pressure, I could have done this much more quickly. But it doesn't matter. Let's see how it goes. I'm just using it like a pen. Scratching on, putting it on. It dries that darker blue so you can actually see it. Just reactivating the pen when I feel I'm not getting any masking fluid out. I probably am because it's very thin um, and I'm just being impatient. Right. 
So let's just add a little bit more white. Then that's what I'm actually doing. I'm adding white. I'm using the whiteness of the paper and I'm making sure that when I add colour, I'm not going to lose that. I just want to maybe put a little bit on here and then make sure I've got plenty on here, especially at the bottom. Okay, I think that's enough. Like I say, it dries pretty quickly, so I'm going to be able to go in and paint pretty much straight away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the bird first, then go into the background, just to give that a chance to dry properly, because there's nothing worse than being impatient and finding that your masking fluid either moves when you put colour on, or you can't lift it off, because it's got damp underneath. On the whole, because I am impatient, I know it dries quickly. So I haven't got black with these colours. So what I'm going to do is just whack some colour on and see what happens. Now, to be honest, black has lots of colour and black doesn't have to be one colour. So this is just going to give me a base layer. I'm not worrying about what colour I'm putting on. Don't be afraid of colours. Unless I'm doing a black bird, but, you know, why does it have to be black? They can see it looks like an ostrich. You know, I can put whatever colour I want as an artist. It will go blacker because what I'll do is actually do something you don't normally do or like to do, and that is make a muddy colour. Um, by putting a lot more colours on top and it will eventually go muddy which will give me that black and then I'll also try and mix a black with the colours I've got because if you look at the new colours they do actually have red, yellow, blue which is a good staple amount of colour so I often just use red, yellow, blue um, so I should be able to create a black by mixing these colours. There we go. So the blue, which I'm not sure what blue it is. I'm, I know that if I mix burnt sienna and French George Marine, I'll get the grey colours that I look for. But this is a cobalt azure blue and a Venice purple. So. To me, they look like the best option for a black colour. Just making sure I'm mixing plenty. Using the synthetic sable, because I want to work quite wet. And I just know that these have that lovely holding quality. Bockingford, I think this is a 425, or 535 actually. So a heavyweight paper. Again, I don't always use a heavyweight paper, but for live, it means I'm not going to quite be as surprised as I might be because I've got the heavyweight paper. And you can see by putting that on, the wet is already there. And I know these colours are transparent. I've already looked, so it's going to show the colours underneath. And I think that's just part of the interesting effect. And there you see, an ostrich with colours that don't include a black, you actually can create a black colour. So, ostrich facts. The ostrich is the largest um, bird. And actually, I think the most interesting fact was the eye. The eye is actually the biggest of all land, mam land, anim land animals, um, which is about five centimetres. So the ostrich has the biggest eye. And eggs, so in the bird kingdom, it has the biggest eggs. But in 
relationship to the size of the bird, it's actually the smallest. So the eggs, the really big ostrich eggs, but in comparison to the actual size of the bird, they're the smallest in the bird kingdom, which I thought was an interesting fact. Both male and female rear the chicks, and they can do this in groups. But what was also interesting was on the nest, the female will stay on the nest during the day and the male at night. And the reason for that is off their colours. So the female is that brown camouflage colour and the male's this black, so it can't be seen at night. Um, I thought that was really interesting. Right, I'm just thinking of what I could do the legs in. Let's see. That's nice. I think this is a Naples yellow of some sort. Just put colour on. And the head. So this is what I did when I was um, given these colours. Just chose to see what I could bring out, what colours I can see, what colours I can bring out with the ostrich. Picking up some, I think it's red. So these are additional colours to the whole range of the white knights. This is one of my favourite. I love a turquoise colour. Just dropping that in. The legs, let's add some colour. Now they actually purposely have these bare legs and I think I read that the legs add, add as a rudder when they're running and they can run up to 70 kilometres an hour and the legs are lethal weapons in themselves. They can kick if threatened. What else? Um, the When people say that ostriches bury their head in the sand, I, they just don't think that's actually true. What, what they do is, when they're threatened, they sit down and they lay with their neck out straight, so it looks like they haven't got their head. Um, so it looks like it's buried in the sand and that's where that comes from. Okay, I'm going to put some colour in here. Again, black and white isn't black and white. It has lots more colour. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but it doesn't matter. When does that ever bother the day? When does it bother me? I'm putting yellow in. Let's put some yellow in. As an artist, you see more. It's, it looks like an ostrich. At the moment, it's fine. And I think it's fun just to challenge yourself. Like I said, a couple of hours. Can you do something with this? I need to do a, um, e news. Yeah, I guess I can. Because, you know, you're given colours and you know exactly what you're going to do. Sometimes you do, to be fair. But nine new colours that, as lovely as they are, you possibly wouldn't, wouldn't chosen, have chosen all nine at one go. Let's see. Okay. Right. Don't think I can do. I'm going to have to have a go. I'm going to do some background. I think this is still a bit too wet, so there may be some bleeding in. Not hugely bothered because I can sort that out at the end. Nice wet paper. Um, another reason I chose the heavyweight paper and the synthetic sable, imitation sable, just for this water holding power. Don't have to worry about colours going into one another because I'm going to do something at the end. 
So this is what I did. This is how I worked. Just so, see what the colours do. Look at the colours, see where I can use neat colours. So I might start at the top. Like I say, I like a turquoise. It's really nice. See how far it goes. Like with many turquoises, it actually goes a long way. So you just need a touch of colour onto your brush. And I can move it. What I'm making sure is that it touches the masking fluid just so it would give me that white outline and down here like I say I think it's a bit too wet it's moving a little bit let's take it down oops it's quite a lot there so I've got quite a lot of colour on the page just move it going to vary the amount of pigment even with just one colour just so it makes it a little bit more interesting oh no I've picked up red let's put that in didn't like that as much but fine right let's go into the yellow now I actually can't see the feet in the photo uh, which is someone's let me have the photo which is really nice of them it's great when people go away and they let me use their photos because it means I have so many images which are copyright free and they don't mind me using these images so someone went on safari so plenty of elephants plenty of Ostrich, and it's really helpful for me. Do you find it more relaxing doing your colours as you go natural colours as opposed? I'm doing my own colours because they're the colours I have, and I need to bring out what I can to give it a form and structure. But like I say, there are red, yellow, blue on here, and that's mostly what I work in, a red, a yellow, and a blue in different forms. I'm not one for many colours. Okay. So it looks a bit scruffy at the moment. Again, not overly bothered. Let's put some grass. Paper's still wet, so you can get some subtle, harsher tones at the front. So... Because you've got, um, you want to show detail at the front, put the colour on at the front first and then just use your already wet brush into the um, orange. Use that one. Because I wanted to use all the colours, I just had to make sure I picked up. I'm going to put some blue in. Oh, that's gone purple. That's really nice. So that's obviously reacting with the yellow to create a kind of purple with the red and a much darker blue with the yellow. All those kind of things are always interesting. And you don't discover it if you are very controlled. I know a lot of people are controlled, but I just like to suddenly find out and be surprised. With this kind of painting, do you feel more feeble with your son? Mm, no, uh, well, you can be because it's quick. So it's quick and you're not making it look a completed, finished, final, pristine, perfect piece. So you can do what you want with it like that but I literally only had a couple of hours to do something but I like quite a loose piece depends on how much time I've got 40 oh gosh I've got 10 minutes left oh, no, tw uh, 20. 20 minutes left 20 minutes left I've got 20 minutes oh no I don't think I've got a hairdryer and I need a hairdryer oh, what? oh no thank you 
There was one there, but I think it's been moved with other people using the studio. That's just... What I have to... What I have to be aware of is just being careful not to over play the colours because they look nice as they are and they're going to dry differently. Always remember that they will dry differently. Don't do anything crazy, anybody. I'm leaving the room. <laughs> <laughs> I just, because I've got a short time, I really do need to be able to dry this. Normally, it wouldn't matter, but I need to take the masking fluid off and I cannot do that until it's dry and I want to add pen on to it. So I'd probably got it to this stage and looked at it. I mean, this was my first attempt. I had these colours. I did something like this and I went, don't like it. So I put it on the floor and was going to try and think of something else. And someone came along and said, that looks good. I still didn't like it, but you can always fix things. You don't have to disregard things because what I did was I put the colour on, just put more colour on now, and I added a pen. So a really nice wash of pen, so it became a pen and wash, suddenly brought it to life and it just made a difference. Nobody swore, did they? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. I, I should have thought of it, I'm sorry. Okay. You found it more than actually the colours that you wish to do? Yes, because you have the control then. There's never been a great one for no. matching the colour. No. It's red, yellow, blue in some form of in some form. It's never much more than that, is it? I try and do another colour, but I end up with just those three colours. Bush is getting a bit dirty. Let's see if I can bring a little bit more colour back here. OK, I'm going to stop. I'm going to dry this. And then I'll put a little bit more detail on and I'll show you where I got to before I put the pen on. I know when it's dry because it will stop bowing and suddenly go flat. Paint dry, I know. I do it all the time. Um, and you can see the, how the colours change. With watercolour, they tend to um, fade. I'm going to have to do it in a different way than I usually do. It's time. So normally I would have put detail on, more detail on with the paint. But what I want to do, I just don't think that's dry, is take off the masking fluid, which will reveal that lovely white and see what goes from there. Now it is important that you are dry when you take off the masking fluid using a mask away. It saves my fingers and actually does grip the masking fluid. So you can use your fingers just to feel where you've left any. But the paint does need to be dried. That wasn't as overly successful as I would have liked. Like I said, I probably chose the too fine a pen. Not a problem. Like I said, I got to this stage, thought, oh, it's not going anywhere. How can I, what can I do? Great thing is, put it to one side, come back to it, or use a pen. And again, I'm going to work quite loosely because you've got all that detail cross hatching
looking at the shape so it's straight here. Anita, yes. I have a question from Ian. It's a question that you get sometimes that, that I know that you don't necessarily like answering. He's asking how they compare to other paints. I know you don't like comparing. No, I don't compare because I think a paint, it's, it's not fair to compare a paint it, it, because it's so subjective. I can say, oh, this is the most great, fabulous paint in the world and someone uses it and doesn't like it. So I don't do that. Um, what I do do is I can say they are very popular. I think it's a very popular range and the, being able to, I don't know if you could see how easy and quickly it was to pick up colour because they're the moist pour instead of the bake. Bake paints often you need to really scrub at in order to pick up colour. Whereas these, they're very instant and they have a lovely range. Made by the St. Petersburg factory, which has been around since the 1900s. Um, so they've made paint on art materials. You can see there now how that's suddenly coming together and that's because I didn't like it. But it's so easy just to bring things back. The pen is a great tool. Makes it look like this is what you planned all along. This is a Faber-Castell pit artist pen, so it's permanent. Um, as opposed to water-soluble, so once that's dry, it may take a little bit more time to dry than you think if you're putting colour on top of. But once it's dried and cured, it's permanent. It's not going to come off. And you can do it two ways. You can do it the pen on first, or like I'm doing now, using it with the pen on top. I often do it this way. It, 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 it's sudden, it really does. And again, I can use pen techniques. The Pitch, yes, absolutely, you, and you get them in different types. This is a fine, so you've got the super fine, the brush end, get them in sepia um, and, and different colours, all permanent. This is black. I think on the original I actually used a blue one because it was the first pen I picked up. It was I didn't really look at it, I tend to forget I've got the blue on my desk. Work. Anita, yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me have a look. So they're all, all the new colours are three stars, which is extremely light fast, which is up to 100 years under museum conditions. So absolutely. And a lot of the colours are um, in the St. Petersburg range. It, they're artist quality paints. <coughs> Let me just make sure I bring the eye out. And a bit of detail here. Because like I say, I can't see the foot. If I could, I would probably do that detail but without looking at lots of different images to get the foot, I'm not going to risk um, putting something that looks odd. I'd rather just cover it with the grass as it is in the photo. So notice I go over the page. I'm also looking at composition. It's very easy to do everything at one level. Um, keep everything like this. Your brain works like that. So the difficult bit is to go, is it balanced? Let me put some, what else do I know about ostrich? Um, I think they live about 20 years. Uh, let me think. 
Collected noun. What's a collected noun? Ostriches. I don't know. I group. Flurry. Group, I think. So what, sorry? Flurry. Flurry. There we go. Okay, so got to that stage doesn't mean I've finished because I can then, it suddenly goes, ah, oh, not as bad as it looked. Actually, there is more things I can do. So, a little bit more colour. Strengthen a bit of colour in here. Again, I'm not overly worried which colour I pick up. Pick up a bit of blue. I've got a good ostrich back. Go on then. Now their wing, wings span about two, two metres. metres, yeah. And they use them as rudders to change direction when oh, they're running. That's good. That right? Okay, so let's pop some more colour in here. So th I think these were taken as they were out in the wild, which I think is just amazing. Such a dream to see animals. Are they endangered? I don't think they're in on the endangered list. We did something about endangered the other oh, week, didn't they're, we? They're vulnerable, but they're not endangered yet. Yeah. 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 Okay, so just pick up some blue. I, I'm not overly thinking about what colour I'm adding, but I do need a little bit of, I don't like that beak, that's gone wrong, but I can fix it. Bit of blue in here, I think. And this is where I can add again some more colour. So I'm going to have to fix this beak because looking at the shape of it it's not quite right it's long and thin here Look, the head goes up like that probably overcompensated with the eye i'm going to Don't want to lose us. Ah, that was what I was thinking of. When I was looking, I want to put more colour in the tail here. It's a sandy colour on the original, but uh, why just stick to sand? What I did want to do was give it a little bit more colour underneath so it looks like the light is on the top. I had a little bit more time. I had two hours. I've got 40 minutes. So, yeah, the first ones sometimes can be better. Sometimes it's the live ones that can be better. You're a little looser. You know, you've learnt from the first one. But it's literally to do with a lot of it. I know I've got a short amount of time. Therefore, you have to talk as well. I know. Talk and think and do all that as well. No, they used to, but they're just left alone, which is better. Right. Orange. I don't think I've used that much. Okay. Right, let's get some strong, so you can see how strong. Just dabbed my brush in to that colour, and you can see how quick and easy it is to pick up. And if you've tried other pans, you know that sometimes you really have to load your brush. So like I say, some colours are a little stickier than others. That's due to the pigment and how it works with the binder. It's just a fairly normal thing find with colours. I'm 
them to. Change direction rather than the straight up. Oh, that's good. Bit of a dry brush. Let's get some darker perspective at the bottom. We've got about five minutes then, Anita. Cool. I'm nearly done. What this, the dark, if you've got darker around the edge and at the bottom, it just draws you into the painting. Like I say, I haven't had a huge amount of time to think about it. I do know that this, the blue, works really nicely and gives me a nice purple. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to mess around with that sheet when I could leave it. So, as with anything, a mount round it or revealing with a taped edge. It's satisfying, makes it look better as well. Very slowly peeling this off because I put the tape on a few days ago. And I do notice if I pull it off too quickly, it does tend to tear. But that just happens with some papers. If you do it at this angle, you've got a chance that if it does tear the paper, it rips away, so it won't be seen if you put it in a mount or when you frame it. I've done really well at the moment, which I'm, oh, it's going to then, that. I know, it's going to tear. But look how nice that clean edge is. It's actually quite satisfying. You kind of, you kind of go, hmm, that's not as bad as I thought. So, I had a couple of hours, literally it was a couple of hours because it's going out at two, just to come up with something. And I think I was, I felt fairly happy with what I did in the end. Thank you. This is going to really irritate Gary because it's not centered. Oh, it's fine, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not that bothered about things being central. What I did do, actually did do a little before we came on air, was I'd already put the tape on, but I'd actually put the tape here and it made the ostrich very central. It, doesn't, it needed to have a little bit more space, like Gary said, to run into. Um, and if I had more time, I would really think about the area and so I move the tape over, which is why it's not quite centred. Um, just to give a little bit more space so it wasn't quite as central as it was when I taped it down. Little things like that can make a difference. Uh, tech, paper tearing. So, just to recap, using the nine new colours from the St. Petersburg White Knight range. Lovely quality paints that you, know, you can pick up really quickly, really easy, and get some fabulous colour. All good, excellent, light, fast qualities. Um, ostrich, like I said, didn't like what I did. It's amazing what you can do with a permanent pen. It, it really just brings things together. Um, and Bockingford 525, I think, heavyweight paper, just because I knew I was going to get it wet. So I hope you enjoyed that. And... Join me tomorrow for another uh, live demonstration, which is going to be a one session again with a studio audience. And that's goodbye from me and that's goodbye from the audience. Thank you.